Hi, I'm going to do a project breakdown here of my Gooper dance. This isn't an in-depth tutorial as much as it is just an overview of kind of the project and the thought process and kind of the general workflow that I go through to create something like this. I do have more in-depth tutorials on the way. If there's certain aspects of this project or this video that you would like to see more tutorials on, then just let me know in the comments below. But for now, let's jump in this project and kind of get started with how I piece things together. So here you can kind of see the Goober Dance project I have here. Now I render this project in cycles, but I have this here set up in Eevee to make it a little bit more pleasing to look through as we kind of go through all the different examples. Let's get started with how I made this ground. So the ground here is actually just a plane and it has a particle system on it that has all of the grass. So you can see here that I just have a repeating ground texture. And then on top of that, for the grass, I have a particle system. And to give you a, let's take a look at the particle system that I used to create the grass on the ground plane here. So over here, if I toggle that on and off, you can see that it's all on one particle system. And it's set to a hair system with quite a high number. I have 3000 particles here. You can set yours lower if you find that it's rendering too slow. But then what I did is I came down here to render right here and I set it render as collection. And then I have a collection here I called particles. And then up here, you can see in my particles that I have bush one, two, three, and four. So I just kind of had a couple different variations of grasses and bushes and little foliage that I wanted to appear here. And then I have it set to kind of pick them randomly down here. That way it doesn't look too uniform. And then I wanted, I didn't want it to look like the same four objects over and over. So you can kind of play with the random rotation under the rotation tab. And by the way, the rotation tab will only show up if you have advanced checked on. Which pretty much any time you use a hair system, you're gonna wanna go ahead and automatically just click advanced because you're gonna want a lot of the features in there. And then under render, I put the scale randomness up to one. And that kind of gives it so that you can see this object and this object are the same. And so is this one and so is this one, but they're all three different sizes. And that just kind of helps add to the random variety and not make it look so uniform or fake. That way you can really kind of populate the whole ground plane quickly and easily. Then after I had my ground plane, which I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn that ground plane off so that we can focus on the other elements in the scene. So all these other elements in the scene are hand placed. So I call these my hero assets, right? You're going to have your objects like the ground plane that are kind of like in the background and they're less of the focus and you're gonna kind of want to make the computer generate those if possible. But some of these other things like this tree stump and these rocks and these flowers and stuff, I went through the scene and then especially these trees in the background, I went through the scene and here's my camera view. You can see that I've kind of hand placed these in ways that I feel look best in the composition. And if you've seen any of my previous animations, that's generally how I handle most of my forest scenes is I kind of place a few hero assets and then I kind of do particle systems and things to kind of fill out the rest because to hand place everything yourself would just take forever. In terms of a shader on all these forest assets, they're all sharing a similar shader, which is if I click these, you can see that it's basically just a principal BSDF with the texture paint going into the base color and then after that I just kind of lower the roughness a little bit now that doesn't make it very realistic or anything but I kind of like it to look a little bit shiny so it kind of has that plasticky feel because if you look at the original animation you can see that I'm kind of going for a stop-motion look so I kind of wanted everything to kind of look like a toy and I could push that effect a lot further but for the sake of render times I just used a slightly glossy principal BSDF. In terms of building all these forest assets, it can be a lot for one person to do. Now, if you just want to spend a good amount of time on one scene, you're more than welcome to go through and create everything. Otherwise, you can go to places like Blender Market or CG Trader or Blendslop.com, and I can put those in the description below. And you can find a lot of assets there for either free or cheap that you can kind of use for these background assets. That way you can put all your time into your hero assets. For example, on my scene, it's the little Uber character here. And then all the background assets and stuff you can kind of buy or get for free elsewhere. Or if you want, you can create everything yourself. And if you'd like, I can show some tutorials on how to create foliage and stuff in this tune style. Just let me know in the comments below. Okay, so moving on, let's look at the little goober rig I have here. So 
He's a simple character, but unfortunately for such a simple character, it ended up being a more complex rig than I anticipated. So I'm gonna go into a bit how I've set him up. So you can see here that I just have a basic armature on him, but unfortunately, because he's got this fat little body and these tiny little arms, you can see that when we get in here and we start bending things, things break really quickly because there's just not a ton of geometry to go there. He doesn't have a traditional shoulder or anything like that. So the solution to fixing that was that I used a lot of shape keys, just select him and go down here and you can see that I have a lot of shape keys and you can even see that as we're moving through the animation, it's snapping between all these shape keys. And those shape keys help him kind of maintain his form as he's moving around. Again, if you'd like to see a tutorial on that, let me know in the comments below. Now for his facial animation, I also put those on shape keys. So if I snap out to this little guy over here, you can see that he's dancing and then boom, he's scared. So you can see over here that I have a little shocked shape key and that that animates on right there and that's when the goober falls and face plants. So that's kind of how I animated all their faces and that's a really basic overview of the rig. I didn't have any fancy bendy bones or anything crazy controls or things like that since I'm just creating the character and animating it in the scene for myself. I don't worry about all the control loops and things like that because I know what I'm looking at. Let's talk a bit about how I animated him. So a lot of people ask how I get this stop motion look and it comes in two major form factors. One are the materials that I use, which I will go into more depth later, but the other is the animation style. So when I animate him, if I click these, we'll pull this over here so that you can see my graph form for my interpolation. You can see that almost everything is on a hold frame. And then what I do is I animate forward. So traditionally you'll set a keyframe here and you'll set a keyframe here. But when you animate forward, you start here, move forward a few frames, animate a key, move forward a few frames, animate a key, move forward a few frames, animate a key. And that kind of gives it that kind of like forward motion look. And when it's on that hold frame interpolation, that kind of contributes to stop motion because that's how they animate stop motion in real life is they don't have motion blur and they don't have keyframe interpolation. And they have to start at the beginning and kind of animate forward. So it kind of helps contribute to that look. Now you don't have to animate forward like I do. You could do your keyframes and then just go back and insert more and more, but I just found it fun to kind of animate for it that way. Let's look at how I animated the crowd. So the crowd, I'm not gonna lie, I could have animated it a bit better, but I had been working on this project for a while and had a client project, so I was just trying to kind of get through it. But what I did is I just looped this dance over and over and then kind of stopped it there. So pretty simple. That dance was only like nine frames or so. And if I zoom in here, you can kind of see, especially down here, that it's just kind of looping up and down. And then there's like a big pause here when they all do their shocked face. Now, I chose to just duplicate the keyframes because I was just moving quick. You can actually select different ones here. And if you press the N key to bring up here, you have this modifiers tab and you can go to modifiers and you can go down here to cycles and that'll help loop your animation for you. So something we can't really see in Eevee, but if we look at the final example, you can kind of see that the fingerprint textures are kind of moving around and things like that. So what I actually do is I go into the material setup so if we dive into the material here, now this is part of the clay shader setup and it's an incredibly complicated setup. I actually have a simple clay shader tutorial that I am working on, but this shader actually comes from one of my friends, his name is Doublegum, and he gave me a discounted link in the description below. He's not a sponsor, he's just a friend and I love his shaders, so check it out. I started using his shaders because they're much more complicated setups and they have a lot more controls that I can do a lot more with. The basic idea of the shader that I'll be doing the tutorial over is kind of like more setup and this fingerprint's going into the normals. And then what I'm actually doing is rotating that fingerprints every two frames so that it kind of appears like the fingerprints are moving around, almost like the objects being touched. 
And you can see here that I've put that into an image sequence to feed into here. And then what you can actually do is you can actually keyframe this offset and then you can start and stop it. So if the object's not being touched, then it doesn't make sense that the fingerprints were moving because it's not being touched to be animated. So you can actually just stop the texture when it's standing still. A great example of that is you can see it here that when he face plants and lands on his face and everybody goes still, their textures also stop moving and that kind of helps sell the effect. So the last bit of animation I'm going to go over is this little burst here that kind of comes back when he pops up. So you can see pops up and it's like, yay, he's okay. So how I did that is I actually just used a grease pencil object. So I created a stroke, which you can see in the collection over here. And then you can actually see that's just a layer sitting in front of him. And if I go in there, you can see that I kind of have these keyframes down here for the grease pencil stroke here. And I just went for it and just animated those. And if you ever need help animating a burst, it's great to kind of start with either a small line or whatever, and it grows out into a big line, and then it moves forward in the direction of that line and kind of breaks apart. So that's just how I set that up. Let's go back into the full scene here and talk about how I made the crowd. Now, you can see here that when the crowd plays back that they're kind of all offset from one another. So if I wanted to make this crowd normally, how I would do it is either put it on a particle system or an array modifier. But I chose to actually just duplicate all of these guys and move them around with their rigs. Now that's not the most efficient thing to do in terms of render times, but what it allowed me to do is to, if I play this back here, you can see that they are all moving at different rates because you know the crowd's not all gonna jump exactly in unison. So now they're all kind of offset from one another in one or two frames, which helps add a little bit of character to the scene. So by duplicating them and their rigs, I was able to offset the frames in the animation by a little bit. Okay, so now let's go through the lighting setup. So I actually got a lot of questions about how I did the lighting setup and it's actually a very simple setup. So I wanted to add a bit of color fill. Now that's not realistic lighting at all. If I wanted realistic lighting, I'd put a forest HDR in here, but I wasn't going for realism. I was going for kind of like a fun lighting setup. So what I did is if you look over here in the world, I actually created this kind of a mission. I left the strength of one, but I created this kind of purple color transmission that kind of complemented the color of the goober and his body. Then I wanted to kind of light the whole scene and add a strong backlight. So I actually have a sunlight that's coming in and hitting him from behind. So if we click that sun over here, you can see that it's just pointing in that direction. And I offset it. So in my scene, the camera's back here and I wanted this to be lit so that would backlight him and separate him from the forest more so that would make him pop off of the forest. But then I didn't want it just to be boring straight light from the back so I kind of offset it a bit. And then what that does is that when you see it from the front it'll actually help give it more of an outline and you can see his form better. And then of course we needed more to kind of highlight him and make him really stand out. So that's where I have these two emission planes and these are just regular emission planes. This one's cranked up to 10 and this one's cranked up to 10 as well. And then I just gave them colors and it's a very subtle kind of greenish blue color on one side and a really kind of warmish tan kind of orange color on the other side. And those colors just complement each other doing kind of a warm color and a cool color is a really common way to kind of do a lighting setup. The last thing I did that really kind of sells the stop motion look is if I go to my camera settings and you can see here in the final that I really cranked down the f-stop. Now these are completely unrealistic numbers, but I wasn't going for a realistic look. I kind of wanted to really cram that depth of field high and kind of sell the effect that we're looking at tiny little miniatures. Because if you are recording miniatures, you get a lot more depth of field just with how lenses and distance and things like that work. So let's talk about how I composited this scene. So if we go over here to the compositor, it's not a very complicated setup, but what I did is the trees are on their own layer and so is the goober and then I composited those together. Now the reason I did that is that I had I didn't want all of these lights to affect the trees 
in the same way that they affected the goober. So for example, the sunlight was getting blocked by many of the trees and I didn't want them to block the goober. So if I come up here, you can see that I have a render layer and a forest layer. And then in each of those, I have a lighting collection, which is different and there's different lights per scene. So they share most of the same lights, but so they have most of the same lights, but the goober doesn't have the trees blocking the sunlight. So then over here in my compositing setup, and I'll zoom in so you can see better here, you can see that I kind of have my render layer here, and then that's combined with the forest here with an alpha over, and that just places the goober in front of the forest. And then here I just have an ambient inclusion set up for my render layer and I have that multiplied on top just to add a little bit more inclusion. And then from there, I kind of have my final image. And then over here, I just add a little bit of lens distortion. You can see I keep it to fit and it's very, very subtle dispersion. And then I have a fog glow and I kind of play at the threshold until I get a look that I like. And then I did a little bit of a curves adjustment here because I am using Filmic with no contrast, so I needed to add in some contrast. And then I kind of played with the colors here until I got something I liked. If you'd like to see more of how I color grade my footage, I can let you know in another tutorial. Okay, so here's what my render looks like after it comes out of Blender directly with the setup that I showed you. Now I'm going to add more effects here in After Effects. I'll tell you how you can also do these same things in Blender. I just choose to do After Effects because it's what I use every day, so I'm a bit more used to it for compositing. So here's kind of the raw render. So what I do here is I wanted to add this camera shake. So coming out of it, I didn't do the camera shake in Blender. Now you could, but I didn't want to re-render every time if I didn't like the way the camera shake looked. I wanted to have some control. So you can see that I have the camera shake added to these two nulls here and that I just attached the footage to that. Now, if you wanted to add the same camera shake and blender, there are free add-ons that add handheld looks. So you could just add that to the camera and export from there. The next thing I wanted to do was I wanted to add an optical flare. So I use the Video Copilot plugin plug in optical flares because I wanted to kind of put the flare off here and create this look that like sun was cascading in. Now you do not need the optical flares plugin. You can go to Google, YouTube, and find plenty of stock footage and free footage of lens flare Layers and you can composite those in Blender with an alpha over. Next, I added noise. And this noise just kind of gives it more of like a film grainy look. It's very subtle, you don't have to add this. I like it because it makes it look a little less polished. And then next, I added these kind of particles, which you can see very subtly kind of floating up here. Now I just looked up like bokeh particles on Google and downloaded some free stock footage that I was able to use in here. And then I just put them on top with a screen, which you could do with an alpha over in Blender or a mix node. And then I just lowered the opacity so that it was really low and that you can kind of see it floating there. Then I faded it in and out as he fell so that the scene kind of died. And then lastly, I just added in an extra little bit of color grade here at the end. Again, you could just do that with a curves in Blender, which is what I used in here. It's just a curves node. So yeah, that's an overview of my Goober dance scene. Let me know if you'd like to see more videos like this. I'm also working on some time lapses and I'm also working on some focus tutorial. Let me know in the comments below what you wanna see most. Also, I wanna shout out to my friend, which you've probably already heard of. His name's Nathan Ducky and he's uh, the leader over here at Ducky 3D. Him and I have become friends and he's got some great tutorials you should really check out. So check out the link in my description below or click the annotation above. Thanks again for watching.